Newton is often called one of the safest places in the world. As a Newton resident, I see police officers around the city all the time, but often don't know what they actually do. So I decided to find out. Right now I'm standing in front of the Newton Police Headquarters because in a few minutes we will be going on a ride along with a police officer. Hey, what's going on? How much? We were assigned to be with Officer so Reed forget. Larson, an army veteran who is now with the Newton Police Force. Later, Rose. At the beginning of the day, Officer Larson took us out to the car to go through the pre-patrol checks. So you gotta make sure your computer unit's working. You gotta make sure that your rifle is in a safe position, it's locked in, shotgun's good to go, and then once everything's on, everything's up and loaded, you can go to the back here. In the back, we got our defibrillator, Narcan, that we use for overdoses. We also got like some riot gear as well. Hopefully we never have to use that stuff. And then we got the caution tape to block off you know, like accidents, um, crime scenes, that kind of stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so my favorite thing about being a police officer is just, you know, waking up every day, putting on my uniform, um, knowing that I'm serving a good purpose, to make a positive impact and protect the community is a great honor, you know, to have. You know, to do something good for somebody and to see them smile, definitely probably the most rewarding thing of my job. Early on in the ride along, we were interrupted by an urgent call from headquarters. 494 Suffolk and Hammond. So anytime with a car fire like this, you got to make sure the area is clear. There's going to be lots of people around and if that car ends up exploding, we need to make sure that there's no civilians in the area. This is off. It's in the Sunoco. By the time we reached the car, the fire was mostly out. Four is off. But we stayed so Officer Larson could finish checking the area and securing it. Everything's fine. The fire's contained. They're basically just going to check to make sure that everything is good to go before they actually leave. With the fire contained, we continued towards our directed patrol. We're going to set up a spot where someone usually commits a lot of traffic infractions. At the traffic stop, we asked Officer Larson about some of the lesser known challenges oh, yeah. of his job. It's not 9 to 5. I wish it was 9 to 5. <laughs> you know, I walk uh, my kids out the door, put them in their car seats and off to go to school, give them kisses, tell them I love them, and then boom, they're gone. Um, tell my wife I love her and then she goes as well. Um, so there'll be a couple days on end where you don't see your family at all and you don't communicate with anybody because you're constantly involved in work and the other stuff kind of just, you know, like that guy. You didn't stop at all. on our guard no matter what because in this day and age law enforcement is negatively looked at rather than positively looked at just this year you know police officers out on patrol and people coming up to them and then shooting them and it wears on you too so by the end of the night you're just mentally and just physically drained from just always being on a heightened sense of alert officer larson got a call that there was a cardiac arrest in the area roger we don't know if the person is unconscious at this time not breathing um but we have a defibrillator in the back, the, uh, the one that I showed you. Yep. Best case scenario, if we get there first, we can use the defibrillator on the person. Yep. Officer Larson proceeded to assist the other emergency personnel to make their jobs easier and to make the call run smoothly. So that was a call for a elderly party that was in her 80s that um, was in cardiac arrest. So. Um, she was unresponsive, she wasn't breathing, um, family members came home, and she was already on the ground. Well, let's hope uh, they don't lose her, you know what I mean? Miracles happen. As the day was coming to a close, we received one final call. Come by Senna for an auto accident. Still apparent injuries. 
When we arrived to the crash site, there were no major injuries. So basically, he was going into this lane, didn't see you coming, and then T-boned you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. You got your license on you? Yeah. Officer Larson said this is the time when accidents start to occur more frequently uh, because people are racing to get home from work. Um, they're tired. Uh, they're hungry. You can see the airbags are all deployed. Um, they're loading his car onto the tow truck right now. My goal in this department is to always advance, never stay in the same spot. I mean, I love patrol. I want to stay in patrol as long as I can, but I want to do like specialty things as well. You know, like uh, gang unit, narcotics, detective bureau, you know, so on and so on. That's, that's been like a long time goal of mine ever since wanting to join the police force. This job isn't meant for everybody. Uh, it doesn't mean that this job is better than anybody else's jobs, you know? It's just that this job takes a different mindset and a different person to be able to, like, to do it on a regular day-to-day -day basis. We spent five hours in the car with Officer Larson, and I think that coming out of this, what we've learned, is that this job is something that they truly care about. You don't put your life on the line every day and spend so much time away from your family if you don't care about this city and its people. So keep that in mind the next time you see a Newton police officer. They're giving up a lot of things to, to keep you safe. So with that being said, for NNTV, this is Dylan Crook signing off.